let's worship him this morning. I don't always have a theme, but this, this week I've been thinking about how good the Lord is and how faithful he is, how he never lets us down. It's just been kind of a common theme. So we're going to start with firm foundation. Let's just worship him this morning. Christ is my firm still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense but I won't be wondering and things like that, I, I would take this time, Ashley, we're just going to have a simple altar call, come and lift them up, as well as something that you may have going on in your life, or in your family's life, friends, and we're just going to start out by humbling ourselves, here I am Lord, here I am, would you take time to, to do that? come to you this morning God until we can rid ourselves until we can understand Father God there it just can't be about us it's got to be about you until we can get down on our knees Father until we can God, rid all of our pride God we truly can't worship you but today God we approach your throne I know part of worship is prayer because it recognizes who you are. It recognizes, God, you are the supreme healer, God. You are the great physician, God. You are the great restorer, Father. You're the one that sends revival to a broken heart, God, a downtrodden spirit. But right now, Father, we come as a faith family, God. We gather around and we begin to cry out to you, God. We lift up our sister, Father. God, you know exactly what our family is walking through. God, you reminded us this week there when the disciples on the Sea of Galilee, God, and the storm arose, God, even in the mountain, your word says, he saw them. God, you see us right where we're at. You see us. You see, God, the worry. You see, God, the unknown. You see, but yet, Father, you're still with us. I pray you would calm all the storms. Lord, you know within our faith family the storms that are brewing. God, we just want to lay that at this altar. Put it in your hands. God, worship the God that is the creator of life. 
most of all, the one that gives us all hope. Lord, we love you today. Now we come, and as we sing to you, Father, hear our cry. God, I pray our worship would be a sweet aroma drifting up into heaven this morning. Lord, hear us today. In Jesus' name I pray, and all of us say,
thankful this morning that we can depend on him. When all the storms are around us, we can depend on his promises. This next song is semi-new, but this song has just been in my heart and in my mind this week. It says, God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may come, the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. But let my heart learn that when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. You're the God of Abraham, the God of covenant, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may come, the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Because great is your faithfulness to me. the rising sun to the setting saint let your name be praised because great is your faithfulness to me oh you remain the away your word remains the same your history can prove there's nothing you can't do you're faithful and true though the storms may come and the winds may blow i'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting saint, I will praise your name. Because great is your faithfulness. on one more song 
great is thy faithfulness. If you have a hymnal and want to use it, page 54, the words will be on the screen, page 54. He's been faithful, say amen, and you may be seated. We didn't discuss our song.
choices beforehand. No, that's good. Because <laughs> um, the song that I brought to sing today is God is Love. So it just kind of flows right into um, worshiping him for um, being faithful, even though we don't deserve it. So I'm going to try to get through this. this love oh it's moving on my mountains this perfect love it's casting out my fears how great this love oh it welcomes me like family from anywhere This love, oh, it's faithful through my failures. This trusted love, it's with me till the end. How great this love, oh, it's closer than a brother. Boy, I like that part right there. 
what I deserve, I can't find it. Boy, if that doesn't make you want to just stand up and rejoice. From my heart today, it's good to be home. From my heart today, I want to preach to your heart about the heart of Jesus. I was stopped in my tracks a couple weeks ago, and I have read over Luke 23, I don't know how many times. Luke 23, and I've I've studied Luke, and back and forth, and Luke chapter 8, and Luke 16, where I preached on hell here a while back, and sin, and I mean, it's just... And in my younger days, it's almost as if I'm standing with a my fist cocked and I'm ready just to throw and just to sling both barrels as Teddy calls it. But right here a couple weeks ago I found my heart stuck on this word in Luke chapter 23. In verse 34, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And I've read it and just went on by it, and I'm hunting for into thy hands, I commend my spirit, I'm hunting for deep stuff, and this centurion, and this due reward in verse 41, and and the king of the Jews, and and all this back and forth, but when I got here to this text a couple weeks ago, and I have just, it's just boiled up in my heart ever since. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. If you look into the context, and this church knows the context, but for you that don't, he's done been through Gethsemane where he has uh, bled teardrops of blood or uh, sweat drops of blood, and he he was in that time there where it was him with the disciples, and he comes to the courts where he's going to be sent to Calvary. He's had Calvary's cross on his back, and he makes it to Calvary, and uh, no doubt it's a time where... Uh, uh, judgment's fixing to be poured out and he gets to this place at Calvary and two others with him and they're driving the spikes in his hand and the spikes in his feet and the others are there with him them two malefactors one of them is guilty and the other one is uh, 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 we'll just call him prideful we're going to call him on one side and the other one on the other and I want to get there in a minute but you can see the heart of Jesus that right after they pound the spikes in and they in the hands and in the feet. He gets there and they hang him up and he says, Father, forgive them. And I can't help but what's come out of my heart in times of hurt and trial. What comes out of your heart in times of hurt and trial? What came out of our Lord was, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He paid our payment right there. And while He's there, His heart is overflowing with forgiveness. And He's saying, Father, forgive them. I believe the heart is a very important thing in the Bible. I believe the heart is one of the most uh, uh, in-depth passions that Christ had is to reach a place of your heart and your soul. The first time you find the word heart is in Genesis 6, verse 5, and God saw the wickedness of man and great uh, was great in the earth and that ever imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. But in the very next verse, you see a grieved heart. It said there in Genesis 6, 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made the... Uh, uh, made man and put him on earth and it grieved him at his heart. This word heart is found 596 times in the Bible. I would say it's very important. Just thinking through and just seeing the heart that I've seen. I've seen all this. Uh, the greatest illustration of the heart in the Word of God. I've seen the pure heart, the understanding heart, the loving heart, the kind heart, the cheerful heart, the new heart. The wise heart, a seeking heart, believing heart, a lowly heart, good heart, singleness of heart, cut to the heart, thankful heart, circumcised heart, spirit-filled heart, heavy heart, repentant heart, sprinkled heart. And I like this one because it puts me in my place of broken heart. 
your pastor was your pastor's wife. I remember years ago, somebody asked Candy how to the, how to explain uh, 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 Ray's pastorship, and she said this. You remember this? He's got heart. So, what comes out of the heart during the times of struggle? You're here today, and I'm we. Every believer here is we. We all have our struggles. What will come out of your heart? What will come out of your heart? If you're standing on reading God's Word, I want to show you what come out of Jesus' heart. Three things God showed me right here. Luke chapter 24, we'll start at verse 32. And there were also two malefactors, uh, also with him two malefactors, uh, led to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which was called Calvary, uh, the place of the skull, they, uh, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on one on, right, uh, on the right side and the other on the left, and said Jesus, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with him derided him. We'll be there in a minute. Saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of, of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription was written over him in letters of Greek and, and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the malefactors which hanged on him, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. And the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art under the same com- condemnation? For we indeed justly, we receive due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Truly, verily, <laughs> I say unto thee this day, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise don't have no big rail to hell probing question, anything like that today. I just want to preach the heart of Jesus. Let us pray together. Father, it seems as if I'm backed up in a corner. It seems as if the church is backed up in a corner. God, I pray you'd energize the people. Energize the leadership of this church. Energize our spirits, Father, and energize our hearts that we would be about this business of forgiveness. It's something the world ain't getting. But let us lead them to the truth because you are the truth. You're the way, the truth, and the light. It only comes through forgiveness. Help us during this time, Lord. Anoint high me behind the cross, Father. I pray y'all, all the glory would be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. This deal of the heart, this deal of the heart, when people look at you and they see your heart and they see the very uh, drive that you have and what comes out of the heart and, and the heart you have that you got for your hobbies and I have hobbies and the heart that I have for my uh, family and I have family and the heart that I have for my job and I have a job and all this stuff is the heart that we have. We all have this heart that that we have to live by because we're in the flesh and, and, and all this. But when it comes down to what's going on inside your heart and soul and what's boiling, what's happening, what's growing, if you will, what's, what fruit is there that's coming and bearing out and, and your walk daily and how it's going forth and going forward with Christ and following Him daily in a continual action, not that we stop and that we turn around and not repent and we get stuck and we and but we get up with this drive and passion today though none will follow you I will Lord I will follow with you this heart number one I see the plea of Jesus heart the plea it's the prayer that goes out among the people as he's there and he's hanging on a cross and his mind is not on 
him, his mind is not on his pain. His mind is on forgiving you and forgiving the people. It's the plea, it's the very, it's the very intercessory prayer in Romans 8 and uh, verse 34 and 1 John 2 and 1 and Hebrews 7 and 25 where he's interceding at the right hand of the Father and he's saying, forgive them, forgive them as they come to you. The whosoevers, let them come to you. All ye that are weary and of heavy laden, let them come to ye. The whosoevers that will come unto you and, and believe with their heart and confess with their mouth. The whosoever. This morning I was sitting on my back porch drinking my Diet Mountain Dew. Can I get an amen? And I was drinking my Diet Mountain Dew and I got about halfway through it and here come the cat. The cat, I hadn't touched it in about a year now. About a year ago I could pet the cat. I mean, and then something happened. It was drove away. Dylan never fed it. I don't know. It got down to skin and bones, but it left. And, and now I notice that it's coming back. And every once in a while, it'll get up on the porch with, with us just like it did last night. This morning, I was sitting there, and here it come, and it got about 12 foot from me. And I said, come on, Cooper. I know you want some pets. And it got there and it stopped and it rolled over on its back and I'm saying, I know you want to get some pet and come on over here, Cooper, Cooper. And it sat there and it looked at me, it crossed its arm and it's sitting there looking at me like that and I said, come on, you know you want some pet. And it rolled over again and just went to sleep and I thought about the, all the times that I got away. And I come back to the Lord and he's outreaching, and he's crying out, and he's saying, come, and he's saying, come here, I want to pet you, I want to spend time with you. I want to forgive you for where you've been. You've been in a far country, you've been in a faraway land, but if you'll come back, you're skin and bones, I want to feel you. I want to fill you up, I want to fill you up and do something that you ain't had that power in a long time. You ain't had this fellowship in a long time. But what I'm saying is, I want to forgive you if you'll just come on back. Come on back over here, Kitty, Kitty. And I'm going to pet you, and I'm going to feed you. The food is right here, hallelujah. The water's right here, hallelujah. My diet mountain dew is right here, hallelujah. If you'll just come, I want to suck. I'm knocking at your heart today. And Jesus is saying the whole time, Father, forgive them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, these soldiers are all they're worried about is what they can get, get, get. They're wanting the garments. They want to take and cast uh, lots for them. They want to gamble over the lots, uh, over the garments. And I think about those garments. Those garments was garments of righteousness and recognition of authority. They wanted the garment of power and the credit for that power. And Christ's final plea was saying, Father, forgive them. And he was about giving. Giving, giving, giving. The greatest illustration of this in the Bible is Jacob and Esau. For, for over a hundred years, they've got this unforgiveness between them. Y'all know the story. Jacob tricks Isaac out of the, the birthright and, and, and Esau, and here they go, and they're back and forth, and they're at each other, and they're... Uh, they're ready to kill each other, especially Esau. And, and Jacob's just out running, and he's out running. Hey, watch this. He's out running. He's out running, and Esau's going to get his revenge. And they live a hundred years. And you, you find this old story in Genesis 32, and, and, and Jacob's getting honest with himself, and he's coming, and I think conviction is weighing in, and he's been alone. It says there in verse 5, I have oxen and asses and flocks and manservants and woman servants and all this stuff. And moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is uh, behind thee, for he said, I will appease thee with the present and go before thee. And what he's doing is sending everything that he has in front of him, and he's laying it down at Esau's feet, and he's saying, all that I'm mine is yours. And he gets to a certain point there in the next chapter, chapter where he's wrestling with God. And you remember that story, and Brother Andy's preached it and Ray's preached it, about touching the hollow of his leg and, and, uh, uh, and the limp that come because of that. And, but you find there in the next few verses in Genesis 33, it said, And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came 
and with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Lee and Rachel and unto the handmaids. And he put the handmaids and the children foremost and Lee right there in front. And he's saying, here you go. And in verse 4 it says, Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and wept. And here's what the story is. It's arms wide open. It's been a hundred years. It's been a long time. And they're coming together. And they're hugging. And they're forgiving. And they're getting to this place where the past is the past. We're wanting something new. And would you forgive me? Would you forgive me? I can just see the arms of Jacob and Esau wide open. And I can see the heart of Jesus saying, that's going to be me on the cross one day. To you, and to you, and to you, and to you. It was his plea. Father, forgive them. Father, Father, could you forgive them? Father, forgive them. I see number two. I see the plea. I see the passion of Jesus. Oh, he was just passionate. His passion to be crucified, his passion to endure whatever, a king for the people. He's the only king that's ever died for his people. Amen. He's the only one that would come from heaven to earth and live a sinless, perfect life in our place. And, and what they were singing a while ago about my reward, I don't see it. It's, it's, he, done, he done died for it. But these thieves know one of them. He knows he's guilty, but he still rejects. And the passion of Jesus is that he would forgive. I see this, three crosses. One on this side, one on this side. One is a rejecting thief, one is a recepting thief. One cross is the cross of rejection, one cross is the cross of reception. But right in the middle, I see this, the cross of redemption. Amen? Come on, you. Come on, you. If y'all can help us preach here. Y'all got victory? I said in the middle was the cross of redemption. Amen? The cross of redemption where he would redeem his people. But this rejection, he said there in verse 35, uh, uh, all the rejection that came in, the people stood beholding and they rejected him if you be the Christ, if you be the chosen of God. In verse 37, and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. In verse 39, and one of the malefactors which hanged on him, railed on him, saying, if thou be the Christ, save thyself. I was thinking about this and I was like, now where have I heard this terminology before? If thou, if thou, if thou. So I got to looking, I find it in Luke chapter 4. Temptation in the wilderness. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from, the, from Jordan and was led up in the, uh, by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being there 40 days, tempted of the devil in those days, he did eat nothing, and they were, uh, were ended. He afterward hungered, and watched this, and the devil said unto them, If thou. Verse 7, If thou, therefore wilt worship me, and all that I all be thine. Verse 9, And he brought them into Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto them, If thou be the Son of God. If thou. I think about this. I look at this word derided right there. In verse 35 it said, And the people stood and behold, uh, uh, the rulers with him derided him. That word derided means to turn up the nose. To snarl. To snarl the nose, to turn up the nose. Where's your nose at? If thou. The nose is the picture of the heart. What's in the heart will come out through the nose. If it's humble, your nose will be down. If it's humble, you'll be up here at an altar like you was a while ago. If it's humble, you'll be at Sunday school and you'll be every, every time the church is 
uh, doors is open, you'll be here. You'll be in humility. You'll be down. Your nose will be down. It'll be the grindstone. It'll be the sacrifice. It'll be coming to worship Him with your service. And it'll be coming unto Him and just letting Him fill you with His purpose and power in your life. But if your nose is up, you're saying, if you'll bless me. If I'll get some credit. If I'll get some recognition. If it's about me. If I'll get mine. Me. Me. Mine. You. I was talking to Stan last week. He has turned to be a commentator and an inspiration in my life. And Stan said this. He said, I can't help it. Sometimes during worship and praise, my heart melts. Stan said this. When my heart melts, out of my eyes. Yeah, that meant so much to me. And I said, Stan, your, your nose is down. I was studying this verse. Your nose is down. Let me ask you, is, is your nose down? Hey, is your nose down to the Savior? Is your nose down to the Word? Is your nose down when you're telling people about Jesus? There's a cause for that. There's a there, there's, a, uh, there's a reason why your nose is down. You're g- teaching people humility before God not to be prideful about me, about mine. Your nose is down. Some of you here are all saying, if your grace is sufficient for my sin, if you, if your blood will cover all my sin, if your mercies are new every day, if... Uh, if you be uh, with me every step of the way, if you're big enough to defeat all my battles, if every word is true, if you're holy enough to forgive all of my sin, if, if, if the passion of Christ will forgive, we'll go forward together, just forgive and go forward together, if, if, if. I see the passion the plea, the passion, but number three, the pursuit. Even on the cross, he's still pursuing lost sinners. He's still pursuing. He's still in pursuit. He's still in pursuit. He's still pursuing lost sinners here right now. He's still pursuing you. He's still wanting you to be saved. He still wants to come and fellowship. He still wants to come. He don't want you to go to that place of hell. He wants to have you in the family of God in the, as, the, as the bride of the church. He still wants uh, to forgive you. He's still pursuing you. That's the reason you feel that conviction of, so he can bring you out of that lost situation. He's still pursuing you every step of the way. He's leaving the 99 for the one. He's still going. He's still pursuing. He's still pursuing. He's still pursuing. I see this. The pursuit. And this one, that, uh, uh, the cross of uh, reception, this receiving uh, thief that said, Lord, he got heaven's attention with that. Lord. Lord, remember me when thou comest to thy kingdom. This man had sin on him and in him. Here's your message. If you don't get nothing, get this. This man had sin on him and in him. He's the rejecter. This man had sin in him, but not on him. This man in the middle had sin, watch this, on him, but not in him. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, it said, But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, we have turned to our own way. But the Lord has laid on him, on him, the iniquity of us all. He still pursuing you. All your judgment laid on Jesus. All the wrath laid on Jesus. One commentator said it like this. 
The three hours of darkness is so that the world would have no part in the judgment carried out on the Jesus, on his son Jesus. Because he didn't want you to see it. He's still pursuing you. He's still pursuing you. Who's here today that he's absolutely knocking on your heart's door to be saved? Who's here today that's been away in that faraway country? You hadn't had fellowship with him. I had a man just a couple weeks ago say, well, when I went to church, I had, man, I just felt so good. Uh, Sunday night and Monday, I said, man, Tuesday, man, I was struggling. And then Wednesday, I was going to church, and I'd be good Wednesday and Thursday, but Friday, man, Saturday, I was struggling. Are you out of fellowship? I'm talking about that first John chapter 1 fellowship where you're so close one time and then you're away. He's still knocking. He's still pursuing. He's, his plea is that he would, he would forgive you and the Father would forgive you. His passion would that he would forgive you and you would be new and renewed with your nose down and humbled coming to him. And then number three, <laughs> oh me. His pursuit. He's still pursuing me every day when he knocks on my heart. Every day. He's still pursuing. Is he pursuing you? Let's bow our heads. Father, Lord, you gave the message. I pray you give the increase. Lord, have your way during this time of invitation, Father. Thank you for your goodness. The spirit that's already moved, Lord. I pray now that we would turn back to you with our hearts bowed. Noses down, seeking your passion in our life. Let us go about forgiving. Let, it make, let, it, let us make it the business of your kingdom, forgiving others and leading them to you in a deeper way, Father. We love you. We praise you. Maybe today, God spoke to your heart. You've been away. Struggle battled I can honestly say that it seems like when I get past one battle there's another battle there that's the picture of the Lord Jesus that's the absolute picture of his life will you say if thou or will you say Lord, you are. You are my bread. You are my water. You are my sunshine. You are my joy. You are my plea. You are my passion. You are my pursuit. Maybe you want to come spend time at this altar just praying. We're living in a day where the devil is working overtime. Don't let him turn you away. Don't believe his lies. If thou, if thou, if thou. If you're here, you're lost. You've heard the message through song already. He is love. <laughs> he will never fail you. He won't. He won't. He won't, he won't never fail you. Please come and accept Jesus as Savior. Brother Ray, be here. Just grab somebody. Don't leave this place lost today. This might be the last service of the church age. Only trust him. Only trust him. Let's stand together. Only trust him. Come every soul. By sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting in His word. Only trust Him, only trust Him.
Speaking to you, uh, spoke you through that message. Sonny will be right here after services. I'll be right back there. Do not leave this place rejecting a, a, a loving Savior that is constantly pursuing you and looking after you. Just a couple of things. Don't forget, men, we've got Wednesday night service. I still need three more men that can help me out, preferably those that don't teach Sunday school. It's real quick. It's easy. It's, it, it's simple, easy to do in our Kids for Christ. I need another uh, man to help me this evening at 4 o'clock. Don't forget, we'll meet at 6 o'clock. A meal will be prepared here for you. We'll shower uh, Kobe and Crystal, a gift card shower. That'll be tonight, and then we'll be back. 5.30 is the meal uh, Wednesday, 6.30 is the message. Also, tomorrow night, uh, C.T. Towns, it'll be at uh, Wheeler Grove. If you'd like to go, 7 o'clock is what time the service is, is up there. What? Yeah, 7 o'clock tonight, that's right. Uh, make sure you see Sonny and Tracy, and finally... Um, we're going to close out, uh, let's see here, we're going to close out, uh, Jimmy and Tina, can y'all come up here, sir? Just want to keep things up, yeah, there we go. So, real quick, well, come on, there, partner, um, I'll get, come on, I'll get you to, I think you can stay. Hey, uh, church, remember Jimmy and Tina, uh, so God has give them just a real small. Well, not a real small is it's going to give them a big mission uh, to put these children in their life, maybe temporary or whatever. We, we want to pray for them this morning. Just come around and just make sure they don't ask them if they need some help, something you can do personally, whatever. They don't want to talk to you, whatever, or, or let you know. But I, I just want to pray over them because uh, everybody in here, if you got four children today, you can imagine what your house would look like. Right? So uh, let's hold them up when they get here in the back. Sonny, you're here to pray over them, and that'll be our benediction. I'll see you back tonight at 6 o'clock, church.